Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've bitten a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Tuesday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Elkanen, Dennis Dick. Uh, breaking news, I did just find a stock that is up just now. So there's that, which is nice. But everything else is pretty much down this morning. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about value and growth and rotation and all those fun buzzwords that you like to talk about. We have some earnings as well. Uh, our guest today will hopefully uh, bring some levity to uh, the situation here. Bill Santiago is a trader, but he's also a comedian. And he will join the show at 8.35. At 9, I'll be joined by Bart Barden. He's the COO of Esports Technologies, ticker EBET. Uh, very recent IPO. Uh, we're going to talk to him about what's going on in esports and uh, the, the gaming side of esports. So that'll be at 9 o'clock. In the meantime, please, please, please smash that like button so we have something to hold on to today. Joel, how are we doing? Not doing well, Spencer. Down 38 and a quarter handles at 41.45 and a quarter. Huge levels all over the place in the S&P 500 index futures. Crude, that's trading down 96 cents here at 63.96. You have gold trying to breach 18.50, up $3.20 at 18.40.80. 80. Silver up just about nine cents at 27.57 and a half. And uh, consolidation station here in Bitcoin. Down $665 at 55,040. All important support level here, folks, at 52,000. Triple D, it's kind of ugly out there. I hope you're doing okay this morning. I'm okay. I'm hedging the trading portfolio. Um, obviously, I'm still long in my long-term account, and I'm getting smacked around a little bit. I sold more stocks yesterday morning. And people are asking, what are you selling? I'm not selling my growth names. I don't really have any left. <laughs> I mean, any money that I have in them is pretty much, you know, big down significantly. So what I do have is inflated value names. So I went yesterday. I sold a bunch of IWM equivalent in Canada, which is a tracking stock in Canada that tracks it for my uh, retirement account there. I had that in my portfolio for probably three or four years, I was like looking at this IWM and I'm like, they're going to start rolling over everything. So um, yesterday morning, I sold a chunk of that at 225, which was right right Whoa. after the open. Wow. Yeah, it's 216 today. Um, that's just lucky to get out of a piece of that. I had a bad uh, trade on Fizz National Beverage. I took the loss on that. Yes, I do take losers. I thought it had, you know, I, I thought it was when I was doing this little rounding thing back in April, I was like, oh, it's starting to show some life. Well, the life is gone from this now. It's starting to look like it could break down. So I sold that stock. I down, sold huh? I sold some utility stocks because the utility stocks are just stupid. I mean, a lot of them have had ridiculous rallies. And if we really are going to fight inflation eventually, you're not going to be in love with a 4 or 5% dividend stock. So I, I've been selling utility stocks. Notice a theme here. It's all value stuff I've been lightening up on. So, I mean, we're in this market where... I believe they will start to eventually hit everything. So I think if you're hiding in value, the, it'll, it'll give us some stats, Spencer, because this value trade is just so ridiculously overvalued all of a sudden. Well, remember, um, well give us a stat you were telling yeah. me on the pre-pre-market well, show. Well, remember how we spent like this entire final quarter of last year saying this is just absolute insanity on the growth side? Yeah. Well, it's gone the other way entirely, and it's, yeah. it's just overcorrected, right? So, you know, the, the stat I'm about to read you is from the Wall Street Journal, but really you could look at any index and it will tell you the same thing. So they looked at the M the MSCI all-world value versus all-world growth, and the all-world value is outperforming with the growth by 11 percentage points in the last 12 weeks, which is the biggest spread since the middle of 2009. Yeah. So it just goes to show you it's been that long. It's been 12 years since value 
outperform growth like it's doing right now. And this is coming off the heels of a ridiculous run for growth. So it's just, you know, you know, you're driving the car and you, and you turn and then you overcorrect the other way. Right. And that's, yeah. that's what's happening right now. I think you got such a gift in so many of these value names. The growth names are way oversold. Um, you know, it depends on what your portfolio looks like, but if you're selling growth now, I mean, yeah, you know, some of these stocks are down 40, 50, 60 percent. I mean, look at Jamaya, JMIA. I mean, if you're in this thing at 30, 40 bucks, it's at 18 dollars now. But you know, I mean, it depends on what your portfolio looks like. Could Jamaya go to 10 bucks? It could. I mean, it, it, it's it's they've given back a lot of the move. I mean, Workhorse, which obviously the whole thing was when they lost that U.S. Postal Service deal, um, it, it was in trouble. And then they reported earnings yesterday. I said the double bottom 944 could hold. It could not hold. Opened right at that point, kissed it, and then just tanked. You've got to stop yourself out on any. If you're in growth names, they make new lows. When stocks make new low, you got to go. I even said he could try the arc for a bounce yesterday. I said it all. Say there's egg on my face. It's like, you could try it because it bounced right where it was supposed to. No, that bounce didn't last long. Two days, and they took out the lows. And now it's making new lows again. When stocks make new lows, if you're a swing trader, you got to go. Your long-term investor, you know, it's a, a little bit different animal, but I don't like owning stocks making new lows either, unless their value plays, and eventually, you know, some of those value plays do usually come back, but I don't know this market. It's a very difficult market. Like, even though I've been kind of bearish and right, it's still difficult to We're still 50 trade. points from that 60 points from all-time closing high, folks. On the SPY. Yeah, on the SPY. On the spy, which is yeah. not indicative of really what's happening in a lot of stocks, Joel, and and this is telling you that if you think it's too late to sell those names, it's not. Wait, what are your thoughts here? Do you think the spy just continues to go up, or do you think eventually you have some financing of losers here? Because this is what happened, and I'm just taking it over because I I don't you know I like I'm going bearish, and you're going to try to take it that hey we're still in good shape. But what I'm trying to say is we are playing the playbook of 2000 to 2002. I tweeted out two weeks ago that chart when we had the rally. I said we were in the summer of 2000 where we had the nice growth rally. A lot of stocks have come back somewhat. And I said on the show, I believe they're going to start to roll over again. That has happened. That was when Tesla was $750. You can go back and listen to the show. I said I still think Tesla eventually is under 400 bucks. Um, I Down do believe one today. I do believe that you know I don't and don't sell in the hole. You get rallies. I mean, we sell rallies, we buy dips. But right now, I'm buying no dips. I'm only selling rallies, and that's because uh, I am calling a uh, uh, emergency investment committee meeting uh, for tomorrow <laughs> with your wife, <laughs> and it's going to be the first one <laughs> since last February. And um, there's a lot of things that uh, that I would like to get rid of. Really, there's a lot of things that I'd like to get it's rid of. It's getting to a point on a few of these things that it might be too late. No, I, I mean, I'd like to get rid of um, L Brands. Don't tell oh, me it's too Joel, late. Sell that L Brands. Please. You've been sell, telling me to sell it since I told you to tell I've been dead wrong on this one, so okay. maybe don't listen to me on it. But nobody's even buying their Victoria's Secrets. There's a headline today. To I know, know I know. That scares me. Nobody that... wants Victoria's Secrets. Shocker. The stock, this is the, one of the stupidest rallies I've ever seen. I'm going to say it right now. This Al Brands rally is just flat out stupid. I know. I flat know, out I... stupid. $8 to $68. The stock was in a hurting business I know. before COVID started. I and know. all of a sudden, we're going back because we're all stuck at home. Maybe I thought everybody's going to wear lingerie and you know get all you know fun at home, I guess, because we were all stuck at I home. Know. We're out of lockdown. This Al Brands stock, I would, if I could go into your account, I would sell it for you. Obviously, Again. I can't. I guess I can. I'll just short it, and then I'm borrowing it from you. But, right. I mean, I've been wrong on this, though. I thought it was stupid at 30, and it went to 40, and a 50, and a 60, and a 68. So maybe it's going to continue to be stupid. I do eventually think the stock's going to come back down. You're hiding out in all these retailers like Kohl's, I, I Nordstrom's. Am. Well, Nordstrom maybe didn't rally as much. I mean, Dillard's had a nice route. It's 104 bucks now. These stocks were hurting before COVID started. There is just a huge bubble in all of this stuff, too. Uh, she won't the, the Peloton. She's married to the Peloton because I told her to bail at one thirty, and you know, and then we're not out of that. But there's there's a couple other things. I don't know Lowe's and Cisco and I don't know. I was oh, just, yes, I know. 
I know. I, I just, this I, I stock just... has not get out of its own way. I mean, this is not a turnaround story. This is a we need value, tech value, IBM, Cisco, all these rallies and these old stocks that still aren't doing it right. But they're getting money because you know why? Because their P's are 8, 9, 10. And people are like, oh, I need value. And they rotate into value tech. These stocks are still not growth names. IBM, I think, is I think all these are gifts up here. I I'm do. I know. Uh, we're, we're, we are bearing down on the lows of the session. Very important today, folks, because we've already traded our average daily range, right? And I've talked about, you know, you don't start to head for the hills and still you, you really see the vol kick up. So we're in the average daily range. So we haven't had that 80, 90, 100 point handle down day. And once those come, then you really, you know, you really catch the buy of the dippers. So uh, we're not at last week's low yet. We got some important levels to talk about. But, I mean, cash is, I, I don't care. I, I know there's inflation coming. I, I would just like to raise more cash. And, you know, I, I've done that at uh, inappropriate times in the past. I would say, you know, during, uh, you know, last year. You know, let's say I have a thousand dollars in the market. You know, maybe I took out. You know, t at that time it was three fifty, and then it went down to like two seventy five, and now it would probably be three and a quarter. But there's certain times you got to do it. You can't regret what you do. You just have to move forward. And the world is not coming to an end yet. There's a lot of tech. <laughs> yet. There's a lot of. You know, Tesla, I would love, I mean, I've been wanting to sell Tesla since 700. That's not a big position, but just look at the charts. If anything, I don't want her to buy more. I I'm not buying more here. And I want, I want blood on the streets. Uh, before. There's, and also, there's blood in the growth. Name. I'm a lot well, older than you guys. You know, I don't, I don't have 20, You go to the workhorse, uh, Jemiah, there's a lot of blood on the streets. There is blood on the streets in these names. It's crazy. No, no, no. Do, do what Zippity Doo says. Don't shoot till you see the whites of the eyes of the of the BTFDers. That's that's what you just hold until you see the whites in their eyes. Then you sell in their face. Um, uh, I actually, mean, I, 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 you know, there will be a buying opportunity. There's going to be some nice bounces here. It's just I'm in capital preservation mode here. Yeah, I'm not even worried about the growth names. You know, I do think the growth is oversold. I'm worried about. I'm not preaching to you to come in here and sell your growth names today. I wasn't preaching that yesterday either. I'm preaching that these value, everybody's hiding out in value names. Look what I sold. I sold IWM because it steamed a lot of smaller companies. You know, I'm selling utilities. I'm selling, you know, I, I was selling, you know, some other, a few other stocks too. I can't remember. I went through five or six of them, but I'm not selling growth names right now. I already sold those. We preached that oh. two months ago. That, tr that ship has sailed. You know, like you come in and you're selling your workhorse at seven bucks now. I mean, it was 30 and 20, you know, and, and you know, there's so many that the ship has kind of sailed. I mean, they could go down a lot more from here. Don't kid yourself. I'm not coming and buying them right now either. But there is so much money hiding in bloody caterpillar, you know, and, and deer. There's money all hiding in these names. What if about this, what about when one I of these I don't, turns company goes under? One of these what? You know, SPACs that, you know, become a real company. They're traded. They trade for a couple quarters and then, you know, a year oh, and then they go bye-bye. The SPACs, Joel, mm -hmm. that, that, that bubble burst. We're, we're talking two months ago. The SPAC bubble has officially burst. They're all, all – almost all of these things are back down to $10. Even the good Less. Ones. So a lot of them are less than ten dollars. Yeah, even some of the good ones. I mean, you know, QS is twenty eight bucks now. Twenty five this point down another three bucks. Here's one of the best ones, QuantumScape. Is it going back to ten? I'm wondering if they're all going back to ten. Every single spec. But I mean, these are all so oversold. This isn't where I'm selling stocks right now. I'm selling it from that whole value portion of my portfolio that has been outperforming. The reason that my portfolio is near all time highs is all of these value stocks. And I think the money will eventually start rotating out of those two. And I think you're starting to see it happen in the last couple of days. Um, you know, yes, we had a beautiful rally and a few of these names, new core makes new all time highs again yesterday through 100. But th let's put this rally in perspective. This is a stock that went nowhere for, for, for where for a decade. It just went from 50 to 100. Are you going to sell this one yet, Dennis? Or are you holding on? I don't know. There's other ones you can sell. Like I was I've been picking on ones 
one, I was picking on some in my retirement account because my retirement account, I don't have to pay the capital gains. That's not my retirement account. I just have such a wicked tax bill that I'm trying not to realize gains. So I'm selling stuff. And then I was also selling stuff that I'm not up much in, like some of these value names I just bought in the last couple of months. Stuff I've had in my portfolio for a decade or stuff that I've had in my portfolio for a long time, it's hard because you know once you sell it, then you got a 50% tax bill on the bloody thing. So you, you got to consider all those, you know, the consequences too. Do I think, you know, new core is going to fall down back to like $75 because if I sell it, that's really where, if I rebuy it, that, that's where I'm going to be because I've got to repay the taxes. I don't know. How do you so, do on the rebuys overall, Dennis? I never I rebuy you... them. I do horrible on it. I know. Because I never rebuy them. So well, I don't want to. Well, some is good trade. though. So, some is good that you don't So here's rebuy. the situation with me. You know I've been raising cash. New I loans. raised more yesterday. I'm sitting 40 to 45% cash right now. That's as much cash as I had before COVID. So it's as much cash as I've had, you know, since March of, of Wow, we're getting pounded here. So I, I don't know. I, do I want to go 100%? I never get all out of the market. I, and my long-term portfolio. Trading, I'll be short my trading account sometimes, guys. So this is not my trading account. Just talking. My trading account is either market neutral or short right now. Not long. But... My long-term portfolio, which is only job is to buy stocks and make money, is sitting with a lot of cash because I'm concerned that we're way overvalued and I don't see anything to buy. Like people were asking us that question last week. Where do you buy right now? Don't you know, buy. You can go buy growth buy. names, but they're all overvalued because they were just ridiculous. So they were ridiculously overvalued. Now they're just overvalued. You see but, Drunken Miller here. Dollar yeah. will lose reserve currency status. So that's getting silly talk. Thank you, Stanley. That's all That's all getting that's silly great. talk. That's great. That, that's just scary fluff. talk. That's just getting that's silly fluff, talk. That's fluff, man. The, the dollar I'm, itself. I'm putting Bloomberg on, believe it or not. Okay, so, so we're all Bloomberg. over the place with this conversation. I just want to say is if you're sitting in crypto and it's all near highs, Ethereum is making new highs. I sold half of that because I think eventually, I was wrong, I sold Ethereum 3,600. And, you know, I've still got a piece. It's 4,000. I feel like selling it all because I just think eventually everything starts to roll over if it starts to get ugly. Um, the growth names have already rolled over. You've been crushed in growth. They're getting crushed so much this morning. I mean, maybe we should look at some of the carnage because it is absolutely impressive. impressive. Right let's go. Palantir. Yeah, let's cover some stocks. Let's, let's do Palantir, PLTR. Oh. We, we've hated this on this show. You guys know if you've been listening, we've hated this on this show forever. We've never liked this stock. Probably dead wrong, beginning of 2021 because it went up. But, you know, this stock here, I don't even know what they do. I don't understand what they do. Um, so, it's, the, uh, it's the CIA went public, according to Kenny Glenn. Whatever they do, it's it's ridiculously overvalued. It was ridiculously overvalued. It still is. Kathy buys more every time it dips. She'll probably buy more again. She bought more yesterday. 35. Um, down 11% now. What's the earnings look like? Do you care? It doesn't even matter, <laughs> but sure. Okay, fine. EPS four cents in line. Sales beat three forty one million dollars versus a three thirty two million dollar estimate. The Q two sales guidance above estimates. Annual revenue growth of thirty percent plus for the next four years. Sounds pretty good. Yep, down eleven percent. Sounds pretty good. Down eleven percent. It's telling you how much these stocks are hated. Bag holders all over the place. I get five messages a week. What do you think of Palantir? That's telling me every, there's a lot of people stuck in the stock. A lot of people stuck in the stock. It's tough. I mean, are we capitulating here? It's been death by a thousand cuts, and now it feels like a little bit of capitulation. But I mean, here you've got a stock. This isn't, you know, this is now getting back into October when we had the big move from 10 to 30. We whooshed up from 10. Do we eventually get back to 10 on this, Joel? I'm asking you. I don't, I don't think know. it's happening today. But I didn't think Trade Desk was going to lose 250 points yesterday. That was awful. Oh, I know. So I know. do we I, eventually go back to $10 on Palantir? I'd be a buyer at 10 I would be interested in Palantir at 10 not at 16 Because at 16 I'm going to lose $6 on at 6 I'm going to lose half my money if I buy it at 16 and it You know what's been a good indicator for Palantir? Since they've been public, I think we've had more cyber attacks than we've ever had. Aren't they supposed to be like security? No, really. I don't even know what they do, Joel. Not, I honestly not, don't know. It's not security. It's not security. It's what like, do they do? 
it, it's, we, does anybody really know? It's it's deriving like it's 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 basically data. It's analyzing data to become more efficient. It's like actionable intelligence from data from data that you can't that we can't even like compute or like data that you can't get anywhere that like volunteers algorithms can like figure out. Like for example, uh, measuring the the amount the amount of steps Dennis takes in, in his trade cave and then and then using that <laughs> oh that's useful and, and then using that to derive a lot of steps to, to derive a signal from something you know what I mean like it's not cybersecurity in that way it's like it's using data for for stuff the that, chart looks like to me it's eventually going back to 10 bucks was this a SPAC no it was no, interesting it was because listening. it was like sitting doing nothing it was a forever listing, I think. Direct, yeah. direct listening yeah yeah, it was direct listing. So I think eventually it could go back to ten dollars. I think it's oversold. I'm not shorting it at sixteen sixty, uh, but you know I don't want to be early. I'm not catching the falling knife on this thing. I see a lot of whoosh up from ten to thirty. It means it could whoosh right back down. Some of these stocks have given back the majority of their gains. This has as well. I mean, forty to sixteen. You think, oh well, sixteen, ten bucks. What's the difference? Well, that's a big difference in percentages. <laughs> so uh, I like the stock just from a technical basis at ten, not sixteen. All right. Do we want to? Do we want to cover? What some about other Tesla? Stocks? People are asking Tesla. Uh, Tesla, there, Tesla. There was a headline. There's a headline here. Yeah, the headline was that they're actually uh, have halted their plans to expand their gigafactory in Shanghai uh, as a result of tensions between the U.S. and China. And they also, oh, by the way, they also said that their deliveries in China dropped 27 percent month over month. <sighs> You know, another thing, too, and I, I just want to mention, we, we've taught this a, a while ago, like what can knock the market off its keister? And I said, you know, a war. I mean, you know, you're having a rent, you know, a cyber attack on our, our pipeline. Um, I mean, what's going on in Israel? I mean, there's always bombings going on in Israel, right? They're a little bit more intense than they've been before. And what was a couple weeks ago, um, a satellite from China just happen to fall in the United States, you know, they're not really sure why. I mean, those kind of things are very unnerving to the market. And you have three different factors there. I mean, that's when people want to go to cash. That when you have those kind of there's tensions, there's everything, you know, there's things going on. Then you have rampant speculation and assets that have absolutely no earnings and no value. I mean, it's it's a it's a, and we're coming out of a pandemic. I mean, it's, I, I just don't, maybe it's not the time to sell. Maybe the market always goes up and maybe, you know, we're going to 5,000 in the we S&P, might. right? Eventually. But I think right now, I think the biggest mistake, mistake people make is they think they have to buy right now. That's it. And that's, you that's don't right. have to buy. Cash is a hedge. It's not a very good one. But cash is a hedge. You don't have to buy. Uh, I agree with that. You don't have to try to catch the falling knife. And people will always point out, oh, yeah, how can you go wrong buying Tesla at 584? I, the chart looks like it's going to go retest 539. Oh, I mean, it, we, just, we, we just went hard. It's probably going to retest the March low. So, one, if you're buying a 584, I think you're 50 points early or 40 points early because I do think you're going to get a shot. And that shot might come sooner than later on the 539. Does it bounce there the first time? Probably. Probably. Arc bounced right perfectly at their March lows. Um, I would look at, you know, if, if you have stocks that haven't made the new lows, the March lows are, are critical. A lot of growth names have taken out their March lows, but there are some that haven't. So that's going to be critical level for it to hold. But, you know, you're putting tests on your long-term portfolio, 585, I think you lose. I think you're, you need to be a seller of rallies. You know, if you didn't sell it yesterday or two days ago, maybe you're holding on for that bounce, you know, but it's tough to call. I, the, the stock so is just the, the valuation is just stupid, and the story is going cold. So, I mean, this is where I talk about that big gap. Tesla's gap between reality and where the price is is still. It was here, and now it's here. It's still enormous. It's it's the price is stupidity. It really is. But you know, it's got the story. It's you know, sexy. It's Kathy Wood. She says it's going to three thousand. It's got to go to three thousand, right? I just have went through this before. We are textbook. I'm going to say it again. We are textbook wow, 2000. We we're we're, we're, we're like six. We're lows. like three four months after. 
We're like three, four months after the bubble burst, and the tech bubble has burst. I, I, in the I, growth I, names. I, I feel like 41, 32 folks here. There's no bids. Get some bids out there. Spencer wants to. Spencer wants to come. I, I, I just need to speak up for like my generation a little bit, all right? Because I'm, I'm a lot young, young, younger than you guys, and I have more time, right, to 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 make up for mistakes in the market and that sort of thing. Um, I am not selling anything. Okay, zero. Zero, zero, zero. I've like, like, there are some, like, there's no bids. That's bid, why you're not selling. Be quiet. There, 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 there are trades that I have on. <laughs> there are trades that I have on. Like, I have this Ford trade on that, that's like, I'm tra- I have there for a catalyst on also that, but like in the long term stuff, nada, nothing. Okay. Uh, as Joel said, we are basically, we're not at, but we are damn close to all time highs in most major indexes, right? I mean, the Dow made all time high yesterday, right? Yeah. So, so we are still up there. It's not as if the the sky is falling. We are still right there. Just as we've gone down for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Now, yeah, I've got a little bit of growth. It's gotten hammered, but that's what growth does. It, it it's got high beta. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. Nothing goes up all the time. I'm not selling. You shouldn't, because you're not, young, right? Okay, and it's yeah. a good call. And I it's a good call. Probably a good young. call not to sell. I believe in the power of compounding. Who benefited the most in the 80s? It was the people that kept investing through the shitty 70s and had the most money in the market for the bull run, right? So I'm I'm gonna let compounding do it for me. I'm not so I I now I'm pretty fully invested. Like I I I, and I, yeah, and well, I what stocks do you own? You've done it smarter um, though. You're not buying growth yeah, at any you cost. Don't buy crap. Well, I've got mostly ETF. I own Ford. Right. What else do you well, have? I own, tell yeah, us what you have. Seriously, tell us what you have because you're not selling anything. No, I own Ford. Please, I didn't sell a share of Ford. Here, let me show you. Uh, I, I I've got it in in Benzinga Pro. I got my. I got when, when you're when you're pulling that up though, and this I think this is the most important point that we can make. You know, Spencer is a young buck. Okay, I'm he's not, yet to you know get married, which should be happening soon. Okay. Have a family, raise okay. kids. Okay. Okay. Someone like me. Okay, that you know, is kicking around the R word. Okay. Why do I need to stick around here? Why do I need to take risk? Why, you know, it's just, it, it's ridiculous, right? Why not? You know, so it just depends where you're at in your investment horizon, what you're in, what's your balance in your portfolio. Do you have a kid going to college? Do you want to buy a new house? Do you want to buy a new boat? I mean, there's all different things. So for you, you know, for you, Spencer, it's fine. Right. But if you're an old guy like me, like I don't want to sit down. I don't want to sit another ride down to three thousand. It's a great point. It's a great point. That's why I feel like the need depends I, on your situation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And also, Dennis is talking about and and Joel too. From they're talking about the short term. They're talking about right now, right? Like how he's positioning himself right now for for trades. Sometimes, but I'm talking on Tesla. I think the people who are coming and buying Tesla five eighty one are paying like they did in 2000. I think it could be 20 years before Tesla gets back to $850. I believe that. I think I think they've got to grow into that multiple. I think it's Cisco. I think Tesla is Cisco of 20 of 2000 and it never came back. So there's certain stocks. There are certain stocks that I'm going to tell you today are not going to come back. I don't know if it's Tesla. I, I speculate it might be, but there are certain growth names that will never hit their highs that they did in January. Never. And that's what happened in 2000. There was other names and you know that, that obviously exploded from there. Amazon. If you're in the right name, you absolutely are going to have some. So stay diversified. But also that barbell approach, I kind of like too, where you got a little bit of value, a little bit of growth, a little bit of cash for if we really get ugly, and then you're sitting pretty. So I, I, you know, your portfolio looks like it has okay, a little I'll, bit of everything I'll, to I'll, it. I'll show you. But with the yeah. caveat that the bottom two is 60%. The bottom tier right there, VOO, which is spy and VOO, perfect, right? That's sixty percent. Everything yeah. else is forty percent combined. That th- well, this is designed th- to win. I'm gonna. That's what mine looks like. I have all spy, you know, and I didn't sell any spy. I didn't sell any spy. So a little bit of IWM yesterday, lightening up my market exposure. Normally, I still have a lot of IWM exposure too. So I have a lot of indexes in the long-term portfolio because you know why? I have a full-time day trading job. I can't be a full-time investment manager too. So I index a lot in my long-term stuff. One, because my short-term will impact my long-term. But I'm just trying to say if you're all growth names, 
you doesn't have to come back. They don't have to do anything. And if you're sitting in all value names now, you move from all growth to value. Well, I think you, now is the time to ring the register. Maybe it's so. always good to be highs. balanced. It's always They're good so to be balanced. Crypto. We're at all-time highs in crypto. Yeah. I would raise cash. and This is what I would do today if I had that stuff. I would raise cash in crypto, and I would raise cash in value if I had all growth, or if I had all growth, I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't know what you do because you, you shouldn't be having all growth. You can't have, you know, and you're learning the hard way. But I'm, I've, I'm probably like 10% growth. In the last week, I have not sold any growth names. Zero. But you don't even have growth any. is getting hit the hardest because you know why I was already underweight wow. it and it's even more underweight. I'm not selling, you know, some of these growth names when they're that, they're getting hammered like that. So, and I don't have a lot left. I've got Corsair. CRSR. I didn't sell any of that because it's kind of a growthy value name. I just don't have a lot left. But I mean, there is opportunities here to still sell near the top in a lot of names. And that's what I'm trying to say is I think names like Caterpillar are a good sale right now. I own Nucor. I believe it's a good sale. Me talking against my book. How about again. half of that, Dennis? Will you take half of that off? Yeah, no, you know, it's it's because I'm sitting with 45% cash. Okay. I don't want to start going 50, 60, 70% cash. That Nucor is unbelievable. When you go to 70% cash in your long-term portfolio, you're asking for trouble, in my opinion. You don't want to get up more than like, you really shouldn't be over 10%. But I'm just really spooked <laughs> on this market, and I've raised it up because I'm trying to take advantage of an opportunity. But, I mean, if you're sitting on margin still right now and you're in oh. value names, please get off margin. Please. This is not investment advice. Not No, but please. Because you know what? The circus is still in town. We say Harlan Pyon, sell your peanuts while the circus is in town. Circus left town for growth two months ago. Surf circus left town for SPACs two months ago. Circus is fully still in town in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Selling circus, tickets. Now they're in the whole like middle of the act in the crypto. The circus, the elephants are standing on the balls. You have so much. You can sell right at the top on Ethereum and Bitcoin. If it starts to get ugly, they'll start hitting all that stuff too. Don't kid yourself. You're not safe in those assets. So if it starts to get ugly, maybe it's maybe they're not. Maybe we're going to just all sell US dollars. We're all going to transact in Ethereum. Um, I still own a little piece of Ethereum, a little piece of Bitcoin. Didn't sell it all, so I'm not fully convicted. But I just think you you got to raise cash in the stuff that hasn't gone down. Yeah, I, I, that that begs the question because you were saying earlier that you were selling value, and I was like, you're selling value and you're doing what with it? But value you know, to cash and ra waiting for an opportunity for all those sexy growth names that were ridiculously expensive to be reasonable. I'm waiting for the growth that at any cost to be growth at a reasonable cost. And some of those are going to come into that eventually. Some of those are going to come into that. And that's when you're going to make a lot of money is when you're buying the growth names at reasonable prices. And that's what we got in 2002, 2003. They threw out no. everything. That's when the person that bought Amazon, well, when they said Amazon's not going under. I've never, I've, never, I've never understood the term a stock pickers market, but now I do because this is it. This is it. <laughs> this is it. Because now... And I said this last week on Spax Attack. Everything is beaten down now. If you want to go in and like find, try to try to pick a winner, go ahead. Try to but pick. The, a but the dynamic here is so much different, and and we talk about this, okay? And it's stocks do not take the same path yeah. like the the second time, you know, like Fubo, okay? Okay. I mean, I it it went up. It tried to rally. And you look at your monthlies. Folks, look at your monthlies. A lower monthly high after hitting 60. Then another monthly lower high. Then another monthly lower high. Then another monthly lower. And it's just going to keep coming down like that. If you if you want to get in stocks like this, yeah, you can pick a double bomb, triple bottom, something to lean on. But you can stay out of so much trouble by buying things on strength or holding up because they, they could just keep falling. I'm trying to think of uh, uh, when we were talking about PAN a while ago. I was like, and, and you know, get rid of it here. And I, I see three tops at 110. Like, hey, when this could, you know, maybe this can get over 110 in a few days and hold 110 and maybe do a meaningful retracement. That's one way to keep to keep out. But the, the path back up the second time or third time is so much different. Like, I, I don't do you think Tesla's going back to an all-time high, Dennis, in my no. lifetime, which is third? Let's no, say I don't. Thirty years. But I mean, anything can happen. We don't know. Like nobody knows anything. 
Look, yeah. So we could. It's not far off. Someone I mean, it chat, could. Someone in chat says at, at the top of the show, and I thought they were right. There are there are degrees. Not all growth is equal, right? There's good there's good growth stocks and there's bad growth stocks. And last year, all of them were up regardless. But there are like like maybe you know Dennis, Dennis's chair is picking on 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 Jumia a lot, and Joel's picking on Fubo a lot. Well, maybe that's not the answer. But that doesn't mean there aren't growth stocks that can be bought here. So I'm just. So I'm I was so- long both those names. There's I'm- just times to sell. Yeah. That's what, you know, is the difference is space, Fubo, J- Jemaya. Those were all times to sell back in January and February. And what I'm trying to say is I'm not even talking about those names today. Like we keep taking it away. I'm talking about, you know, the, these commodity trades. That lumbers, it's oh, $1,700. Oh, it, commodities it's are gone nuts. Ridiculous right you, now. You, you got to take some profits in that stuff. Because you know what? People are going to start raising cash from their winners. That's what they do. They've got to finance their losers and they start selling their winners. People are running into Procter and Gamble yesterday to hide. It's not cheap. People are running back into Clorox. It's not cheap. Clorox is trading like 27 times earnings. Yeah, well, I think nice. it's a sell. I sold my Clorox. I had it. I sold it three days ago. I'm, and I'm wrong because it went up more. But I think you gotta just have some cash. If you if you have a, if you're at eighty percent cash, you're in a total different ball game. But if you're sitting with no cash, I think you start raising it from some of these stocks that haven't, you know. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Newcore is going to go to one hundred and fifty dollars and two hundred. Maybe Lumber is going to three thousand dollars. I mean, here's the Lumber thing, and it looks like this on the bloody chart. Yeah. But you know, maybe maybe eventually, maybe it's going to keep going up. But maybe inflation is running rampant, and everything's just going to keep going up, and the commodities are where to be. But in all likelihood, things correct. And there are bubbles in everything except growth now. I sell bubbles. That's right. what I do. Let's bring on our guest here, Bill Santiago. We're going to find out how much cash he has. Bill, how much cash do you have here? Hey, how you guys, how you guys doing today? What's up? What's up? Oh, how you doing, oh, Mr. Santiago? All in on growth. Let's do it. What's up, God? Bill, Bill, I, before we get to stocks here, and before you start your rant, I, oh, I just, on. you know, I know it's been a big year. You know, it's been a rough year and everything. You have no but, idea. <laughs> but but I, I hear that, like, you're back on the road and you're doing some shows and uh-huh. that you actually, in one of your shows, you doubled your audience. Yeah, there, there were two people there. There were two like people that. there. Yeah. yeah. One it, just like the, it, was lot, it was a lot like this. <laughs> just low your start. mom and then your mom brought a friend. <laughs> I'll um, let you go though. I know you're wound up. Tell us. I'm a little. I'm, I'm a little wound up, and I'm, I'm all set to go. Like I plan this out. I, I don't. I know you guys don't know this, but I write just for you. This, these are totally brand new, bespoke jokes nice. just for you people. Spoke. And I like to start out today with something appropriate. One of my favorite quotes, which uh, maybe you heard of it, is by Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan till they get punched in the face. <laughs> or trade desk misses earnings. That's a, that's <laughs> a Mike Tyson uh, quote that I think is appropriate. Hey, by the way, let's make this quick. I'm in the middle of a margin call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask you something because you guys know better than I do. When Ameritrade says urgent action required immediately, what's the time frame for that? Is that uh, is that a little wiggle room on that or is that immediately-ish? <laughs> How much time do I have to address this problem? It means you can probably go take a nap and come back later. <laughs> you know, you want to know the truth? I'm not scared. I can handle the margin calls. What really gives me a heart attack is all the money I got to spend on Roblox every time my six-year-old wants to buy her avatar a new outfit or adopt a flying panda or a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where all my money is going these days. But I know you guys want to talk about, about Elon, so let's get to it. Okay. What, are you, what, are you, what are your thoughts here? I mean, here he's on Saturday Night Live. I thought he did a pretty good job. Not I only actually that. thought not, he was not, pretty not, not only that, let's say it up front. I've got to give it to him. It takes a lot of testicles to go on Saturday Night Live and do such a good job. Not anybody can do that with no experience, but he really pulled it off. He did. And, he was he was one of the funniest people on there. I thought everybody else was terrible, but Elon Musk was really Yeah, and good. I don't think the other people were holding back either. He was just naturally better. The, everyone else was Yeah, terrible. I think so. I think he should, I think you should go, I think he's good at everything he does. This guy is just good at life. It's, it, it's amazing. And still you don't think his uh Tesla will ever see all-time highs again even though you're, you're such a fan of the man. I, I like I, SpaceX. I'm a more fan of his SpaceX company. Hey, uh, uh, but don't, don't you think it's like just such brilliant marketing for him? It's totally free marketing. It was better than the Tesla Kila or the short shorts or the flamethrower or sending a car into space. He is the master of free marketing. The only thing he hasn't done yet is put out his own cologne. Which he will. 
Uh, yeah, I'd love to yeah, see that. Musk. I, I think <laughs> Musk, Musk. It must be the Musk. It Musk, is. Musk. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. I'm surprised he hasn't done it yet. That was musty. Yeah. You know, you know, you know. After this, he's he's now more popular than Kim Kardashian. And I thought, wow, imagine if Kim Kardashian could code where she would be now, <laughs> or trade. Or if Elon could put out a sex tape, but we can't get into it because Joe sent me a warning. Right before, <laughs> he always so. got to cross the line. By the way, <laughs> by the way, Dennis, good call on the doggy coin pullback after Elon's SNL appearance. You 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 were on it. You were told you are the anti Doge father from now on. Anti Doge father. I dodged I dodged the Doge myself. I, I, I didn't get into it. What I love about cryptocurrency though is that it's absolutely secure, except when someone steals all of it without a trace. I mean, right, you can't exactly. get that with anything else. That's the catch. Hey, you guys want to talk Bill and Melinda Gates? I don't yeah. know if you heard. Uh, oh, no. What happened there? I mean, they <laughs> seem so I don't know, man. Man. But, I, I, but it's just What so do you funny. think went on behind the scenes? What happened? Oh, who what I don't know. What do you think goes on behind the scenes when you have so much money? Money doesn't matter. Anything could happen. <laughs> but I like I, the uh the uh the, the statement that the issued. We no longer believe we can grow together as a couple. And this next phase of our lives. That was an official statement. I mean, of course, and how can you grow together as a couple if the next phase is divorce? <laughs> That's true. And it, and it was a joint Obvious statement. guy says. So is that, I mean, they're both, they're both, they're both idiots. And did you know there was no, no prenuptial agreement? I, I, I read that. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. She's, Zero. she's. I mean, yeah, if I if I ever make done well for herself, so is is Melinda Gates the best trader of all time, or the best investor? She's the best. She's the richest. She's the richest woman on the planet right now. She made what a twenty a twenty five year trade. He went he went from like fourth riches to who cares, and uh, <laughs> she's now she's now the richest woman on the planet. Two she, for she one really, stock split. So really, wait, 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 where are you hiding out in your portfolio now, Bill? How, how's your portfolio holding out? Oh, I think it's gone. I, I think it's uh, um, what Elon Musk would refer to it as a uh, uh, an unscheduled uh, total uh, landing pad disassembly. It's uh, it's exploding as we speak. And uh, but uh, you know, I'm hoping to marry Kathy Wood and uh, make it all good. <laughs> what what I, are your I, I think she, She's almost in my league now. I mean, if her if her if her stocks keep tanking, last year I had no chance. But I think I got a shot at Kathy if uh, interest rates break <laughs> again. She will be in my league. Under a hundred bucks, ARKK. So ninety-eight dollars here this morning. Did you sell that yet, Bill? You talked about that a long time ago. Oh, the uh, the, the 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 genomics, right? Arc G. Yeah, I did, I did trim it. Not enough, but I did trim it. Yeah. It's always never enough. I mean, when it's the a crazy market. Down. It's a crazy. I mean, the the lumber prices. Dennis talks about it. I had to stop construction on my model boat. I can't afford it anymore. <laughs> I am so screwed on this house. I actually, Bill, I have anxiety over the lumber prices. It's like in my face. And people know that I'm building the house from the show. So I actually have Twitter followers that just want to throw the lumber in my face. What are you Let doing? Me ask you if, you build, if you build it virtually in Roblox, it's going to cost you more. So be thankful for the lumber prices. Okay. So the virtual houses were going to be more expensive to build than the real house. So I, still yeah, I, I wasn't it. taking inflation seriously. You know, I figured, hey, I pay 12 bucks every day for a rip off a of Chino at Starbucks. How bad could it be? But this is serious. I, I, I should have listened to you, Dennis. I should have listened to you. Sell your peanuts while the circus is in town. Circus that is, is great in... advice. But yeah, I, that's I Harlan Payan. I, I kept on waiting for the fat lady to sing, and she sat on me. Now I now I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I actually thought I was listening to Dennis. Like I, you know, I'm, sometimes I'm listening in the background. I'm not quite getting it right. But like I was like it was it became my mantra: buy value on dip, sell tech on rips. Buy value on dip, sell tech on rips. Been working well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but then I realized I'm doing it backwards. I was trading this dyslexically. <laughs> that's not so well. No, yeah. that's uh, that's the dyslexia that's, that's the, is an issue. I'm, I'm on like Unless the other really bad at making calls, then it can I'm, work I'm, out for you. <laughs> it's uh, it's terrible. I mean, I was thinking about it. They say a rising tide lifts all boats, but this market is sinking my sinking my dinghy. I gotta. I, I'm waiting for them to come up with an anti FOMO vaccine. I'll be the first one online for that. I think I need it. I I would take it. I would actually take it. I, but I, I finally, I finally figured out. I mean, I have to. I'm learning, and I finally figured out the difference between value stocks and growth stocks. And oh. uh, I know you guys like to talk about that. So here's my take. Here goes. Are you ready? Yes. Yep. Okay. You never feel like mortgaging your house to buy value stocks, but you never get to put a helipad on your house if you don't go heavy into growth stocks. That's, That's true. That's true. Growth stocks are for people who believe in YOLO. You only live once. 
value True. stocks are for people who believe in reincarnation because maybe you'll get rich off them in your next life. <laughs> That's also true. That's Growth true. stocks <laughs> get you sexually excited when they go up and not even Viagra helps when they go down. <laughs> okay. Growth stocks make you fantasize about retiring early. Value stocks make you fantasize about not getting fired this week. <laughs> yep. That's true too. If you're lucky, growth stocks go to the moon. If you're very lucky, value stocks go to the Catskills and you're thankful for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good finish. <laughs> that was good. You know, well, you did, it's doing great today. Doing hey, I'm great doing my today. pants. I'm holding myself back because I got that little warning and scared me half. We needed Please. this today, though. Lighten the mood here. Because, you, you need know, it. I, I need it. I can't even. Oh, man. You don't want to see a screenshot of my account. Today. I got a line of up, up on, on people of Twitter just hating on me because I'm saying that it could get uglier. And people don't want to hear that it could get uglier. But oh, oh so yeah, we need yeah. something. We need some good news here. We need something to make me feel better because okay. I feel bad being bearish. I don't want to be bearish. I'd like to be bullish. It's just tough. I, Bill, well, you know what? Because everywhere, everywhere you go, everywhere you doesn't matter what the market is. You've got to look for opportunities. You know, yeah. like I, I, here, here, here's one. I maybe, maybe your your viewers uh, can get uh, uh, get some benefit from this. Like I, I have found a new way to make money. I never give anyone the finger anymore. I make them pay for it. <laughs> here's how I did it. Here's how I did. It. I used a new technology. I created a middle finger NFT. <laughs> And you can actually buy my non-fungible crypto collectible middle finger for just $69 million. That, you Wait, can get rich yeah. on that idea. It was, it was higher, but I but it's on sale because I'm behind on my rent. So there you go. I like the non-fungible middle finger. That's a good you know, no, no, here, here it is. Here it is. Here's my favorite reopening trade. And I hope it helps a lot of people out there. I, I think it's still got a lot of room to run. Ever since the coronavirus, uh, uh, you know, sort of flagged off and the vaccine started working. Ever since people stopped... Uh, dying. I've been shorting funeral homes and for formaldehyde futures, and it's uh, amazing how, how how well that's done for me. Wait, uh, on the NFT note, Bill, <laughs> how, uh, how would you feel about selling this this NFT? Which well, I can't see it. I'm not looking at you guys. I'm oh, at you. oh my goodness! Oh my god! <laughs> Who is that? I love it. Where <laughs> in the world am I? I'll tell, I'm in a lot of trouble. Wait till the wait till the market opens. Oh my god! <laughs> Where Bill, I want to ask that one you. Up from? That's a good I, I, one. I don't want to interrupt you. You're on a roll, but uh, yeah, the roll's you know, almost over. So go ahead and interrupt. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, any any highlights? Any moments from the show? Uh, we had you out in November, and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk politics. No. But uh, uh, <laughs> any any. Wait, did uh, something happen? Was there an election or something that I missed? No. Uh, oh, we're not. We can't get into it. Go ahead. What what, what do you want to talk about? Any any highlights from the show? Like any highs or lows or i know you always make fun of us i love when you make fun of me and dennis and anything and spencer well i just want to know if your wife is finally going to let you get rid of peloton and oh, uh God. you know where i can get that haircut that you got because you're looking great and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i obviously i obviously need one but uh <laughs> I, I i listen to you guys every day i try to i try to catch up i actually catch up a lot more right before uh right before i gotta go on but i i, I try and catch it's just been so busy i things have been Things have been uh, nuts, but uh, uh, it's good to uh, be back on. And I hope uh, you know uh, you don't mind if I plug my new my new book. Uh, the go go new- go! Oh, hey. Here here it is. It's on Amazon. It's just it's 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 out today, and uh, it would really help if uh, you know you guys can pick up a few hundred thousand it's out, copies. It's, out today. <laughs> it's called it's, it's called the most you can lose is everything. And I think it's uh, I think it's really appropriate. I hope. Uh, <laughs> well, so can lose Did we that. make He's it? Googling. Is this really a buck? <laughs> no, yeah, all of my all of my favorite uh, trading uh, uh, secrets. So, uh, everything. Yeah, we can all be on the same page. And uh, uh, unless, unless unless you're unless short you're stocks, stocks and you can actually lose more than everything. But, but. I didn't know that. I, uh, next chapter. Next chapter. I know you guys are always <laughs> writing next chapters for your book, so that goes in the next one. That wait, goes in the wait, update. Wait, I googled that term. Which one? Wrong. The most you use for everything, and it brought me to your site. It brought, it brought you to what? To like your site, or like, uh... did it really? <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Anyway, good SEO right there. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's been a lot of fun. Bill, 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 give us a stock tip before you leave. Give us one tip. What do you got for us? Let's see. I really do like. I, I don't know how it's going to do, but I really do look like Roblox. It's amazing how uh, addictive it is, and uh, how how much money you have to spend to uh, keep. I kind of like Roblox your, too. Your, your child, your child's addiction. Your earnings were good. 
I'll say yeah, that. I like uh, I like Roblox, and uh, I've been doing pretty well in uh, in Lockheed Martin. You know, I think I got to take I own that. to take care of my uh, my margin call, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Lockheed, like, oh, here's another one. Here's another one that's been doing well. It's totally under the radar. You ready? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how much further it has to go, but uh, uh, that that Brazilian uh, uh, air, air, air 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 airline manufacturer M M Embraer. Oh yeah, ERJ. Yeah. It's been doing. It. I'm a, I put a little into it. It's amazing how how well it's doing. It's not going to save me, but it, oh, wow. it, it's it does way better than uh, Boeing. ERJ. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Hey, look at that. Straight up, a little pullback here today. Huh? Straight am up. I, am, I, am I am I talking? Or, oh, come on. This guy's got this video. He's anything. buying the stock. Bill, you're yeah. great. <laughs> Bill, you, I, I can't thank you enough. We got to get you on more often. Anytime. I'm here, I'm here for you good. anytime. It's a, always yeah. a pleasure. It, yeah. It, uh, you were very, very under control today. I appreciate it. We won't even cross any lines. Lines. We will not get flagged on he's YouTube today, today <laughs> when you talk about uh, who was that lady that he <laughs> talked about, the congressman? Yeah, don't we'll, get them crossing the lines. I don't remember. Don't get me started, lines. Joel. Okay, this is your fault if you cross. Joel sent me. Joel sent me an email right before I got on the show. I'm like, okay, I gotta throw half of this shit out. I mean, sorry. Oh, <laughs> you got me going. <laughs> on. And don't say Joel. It's Joel's fault. <laughs> Joel's fault. All right. Thanks a lot, Bill. Love you, Bill. Let's do Thanks it another Bill. time. Let's do it soon. All right. We will. We will. All right. All right. All right. Bill Santiago, comedian extraordinaire, joining us here on Benzinga's pre-market prep show. Uh, I hope CNBC doesn't steal, steal them from us. All right. Do we want to cover some stocks? I thought this was a stock yeah, show. Do ticker time here. We're nine minutes. Let's do some ticker time. Let's do some ticker time. If you have tickers, drop them in the chat. We'll take a look. Somebody was asking about plug earlier, P-L-U-G. Plug your nose. That said like they were big. I, I, I don't really know uh, what there is to say about it, but I don't know if Joel has a level. If accounting, uh, plug, accounting. What did, when look at pro and see when the oh, I can tell you when was yeah. that accounting news? Oh, Joel, they had stuff out yesterday about it actually. They had stuff out yesterday. What they, they th so they like reported for some stuff, but not for other stuff. The, the the some of it is they still is still delayed. They're still going through the backlog. Remember, they had to re-report. It was two whole years plus like some extra quarters here and there, and they had they had to re-report re all of that, and they're not done yet. So the, they did report yesterday, I think, for the uh, prior quarter in 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 2021, but they're still going through the backlog of the 2020 and 2019, uh, and I think 2018 uh, years as well. This was. Five bucks forever, four, two, three, four dollars, 17 still. Um, Just to I don't go know. to the monthly. Clog, Ballard Power, Fuel Cell. They've all come down so far. Fuel Cell, you know, I own that forever at three. It went to 30. And I obviously, I, I said I sold it, you know, before the big move, just before the big move. So I have a little hate on for that stock for that reason. But I said this on the show when it was $12 about a couple months ago. That I think it could eventually get back to three bucks. Thirteen seventy. Um, so. Thirteen seventy five. Uh, two months. Some support lows. down to thirteen seventy five. So <laughs> that's four point twenty five percent down, Joel. I'm bid from a. I, I got a hundred shares out there. Thirteen. Right. And the reason I just want to tell you why. Uh, splits two monthly lows. Thirteen twenty seven. Thirteen ninety two. They did this already. Plug power, we don't even have to say where were the stocks. We should go back and look at where it really was in 2000 and what it did because it might just do the same dang thing again, the same stock. If you go all the way back to 2000 on plug power, it probably is going to do the same thing again. Just it nailed everyone. Oh, oh this one's still there, Dennis. Oh this my one because it was $350. Uh... Uh, yeah, two bucks. Uh, this one, I, I, I gotta talk to Trade Station. I gotta let, let, see if I can get twenty five years of data because even now, even at that, it's still as you know. So you don't have the, the the further back. You need to get further back data. It might, the high might have been higher than that, but higher than uh, three eighty. This this is the this is the stock that shows you stocks don't always go up. Would you guys buy AMD in the sixties? Yeah, yeah, see, I would. I tried it. I tried it already once, and then I just stopped out of it. Um, it it's, it's got it's a bigger level, though. Right now, it's taking out. So yeah, it, it needs is. to hold this 73 to 74 area today. This is critical support. And if it doesn't, you might get your shot at 60. So there's actually a good short setup. If it takes out 73, right? Um, it's 74. actually – I hate shorting in the dip, but you know this actually is – if I was short this thing, I'd lean back for a little bit and wait. 
I do think you might eventually get a shot at 60. I'd be a buyer at 60. Real quick, before we do any more tickers here, uh, what where I'm pointing on my cursor right, right here, do you know what this was right here? And I put a little arrow there. You know what that was? No. Uh, that spike? Earnings. That's spike. Earnings. Okay, hold on a second. Earnings, hold on. Dude. Okay, okay. Um, okay, guess. Guess what day this was. Earnings. Was it, was okay. Same day? Uh, guess what day this was. Earnings. I'm sensing a theme here. Yes, I am. Well, this didn't make an all-time high, but boom, boom, earnings. And then oh. the other one, I, and I, man, I, we haven't done any lunch bets and anything, but man, I'm really regretting not uh, doing some kind of lunch bet with you on Facebook yesterday. But uh, this is the last last thing in the exercise. Uh, guess what day this was in Facebook? Was that earnings. it? Yeah, it was. They oh, all yeah. topped on earnings day. It's These were great earnings, too. When they stopped going up on earnings, it was a sign to get the hell out of everything, I guess. So, I don't know. Zillow? What Do about Zillow? Facebook. 296. Let's we'll see if we can bounce at 296. But right now, it's hard catching the fallen knives. You're losing more money trying to catch fallen knives than you're making. It's tough. Uh, Albert Point Power Alert, Alert Cautious, cautious yeah. to saying was fourteen hundred and ninety-seven dollars back in March of two thousand. I don't know that verified. Nature Bound says it was fifteen hundred and sixty-five dollars. So, regardless, we can see that it was obviously significantly higher, and you know it hasn't even come back a fraction of that. What else you got? Um, chat's asking about PaySafe. They had earnings this morning, PSFE. So the earnings are out. They uh, beat oh. on the sales, and they raised their guidance for the year. But this is a growth name. Seems like all SPACs turn back to 10 bucks, and then they bounce around 10 for a while. So I would say you probably bounce at 10 It's 11 now, down 2.5 bucks here today. I think you bounce at 10 today if we get there. I don't know if we're going to get there today, but if we do get down there the first time, maybe you try it the first time in the low 10s, hangs out there too long, then you got to get out, but maybe you get a bounce at 10. So which one, which this, one I miss that? PSFE, just because it seems like all SPACs like to bounce at their 10 when they get down there the first time. Fisker is getting close to the 10 too. I've taken actually taken it out. Fisker yeah, bounced so, off 10. I, I still have know. a piece of Fisker. Disaster. Can you this tell me why the I, they started 10 and we do this and they're at 10? Okay. But that's it's just because they started there. Yeah. Right? I don't know why. And they have a people, lot of money. I think people are confused. And they think they get the money back at 10, but they don't want their post back. But I think there actually is investors that think that they can't go below 10. I really believe that there's people out there that think that they can't go below 10. And some sophisticated investors that just don't do their homework. So, and once they're post deal, they can go below 10 and they can go wherever they want. There's no getting your money back. It's the only way you get your money back is that they don't get a deal done. So that's why you see a lot of SPACs that are trading 980 that haven't done a deal. Don't not going down because they don't do a deal. You're going to get your 10 bucks back. So Fisker, $9.50. This is awful. I rebought some at 15. I sold half of it. I took half the loss. I should have sold it all. I wanted a little piece. I still believe in the long-term story in Fisker, but you know, 2020 end of 2022 for the first cars, this could go down to five, could go down to three. I'll probably hold the little piece I have because it's like a fraction of a percent of my portfolio. But and you know, maybe I buy some more eventually. But man, I tell you, this uh, EV trade, it's they all look the same. Wow, they, look all at the beyond, EV trades are horrible. what about Beyond Meat, Dennis? I haven't even looked at it. It's Double it's D. just ridiculous. I can't believe it. it got to two twenty again. I mean, if you were in Beyond Me, it gave you a second chance to get out. This is just one of the most overvalued stocks on the planet. Beyond Me, it's beyond belief that it is has been Do you up know here what for this did, long. That, that last Mark Fusco was on our show. He was one of the first. He 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 was in the private markets with yeah. Beyond Meat. Yeah. And he said he was in at like two or three dollars. And when he got out of the lockup expiration, he said, "I'm selling it as fast as I can." He's going to be right, I think, eventually, that those sales that he was making at $80 and $90 are eventually going to be correct. It just this market just got stupid. People look, oh, Beyond Meat, it's so cheap now, $220. They make veggie burgers, man. And this is a veggie burger good. maker. It's got a seven or $15 billion market cap. This is one of the stupidest uh, rallies of all time. It's, it, it's all right. Yeah, fine. I'm not going to. If you're just long beyond me at 107, not gonna, not gonna I, I, I've been saying in growth, I think it's too late to sell on some names. And beyond me, I don't think it's too late to sell. That's what I'll say. And just my got, opinion. You know that other spike to 220? I think that was in January. You know what that was? 
It was, uh, oh, we got to deal with uh, Mickey D's. That was a McDonald's. Yeah, style. McDonald's one. Yeah. McDonald's style. Yeah, man. The new, I mean, when your stocks don't go up on good, I mean. When they go well, bad, it, down on good news. Yeah. Yeah, but when they when there's good news and they pop, it faded that day, too. I remember that. I mean, you got to you gotta look at the, read the tea leaves on that. Uh, we're getting a bunch of tickers here. Yep. We, I, I'm going to try gonna and cover. Uh, what I noticed is that when I have to actually type, instead of just look at the chart and bang it out, I'm not as efficient. But I will do my best to get as many of these stocks as possible. So just keep the tickers coming, okay? All right. Do you guys have any final thoughts for, for, for today? I'm still going to say I am selling value. I'm selling. I'd be selling crypto value at all time highs. You're basically at all time highs. If you didn't have any cash right now, I'd be raising it from that. Um, maybe you're going to regret it. You know, nobody knows anything, but I just think we start spilling over. And I think we the selling starts to escalate in those other names. I would not be surprised. The growth is way oversold, man. I'm not told it. I'm not selling any more growth down here. It's way oversold. It was oversold yesterday. It's oversold today. It feels like capitulation to a certain extent. If you've got a growth name that you've wanted, I do think you can nibble. Like I said, Penn Gaming, I thought you could start nibbling at 80. It's 74. You know, oh, you Josh always asked me, DraftKings, could you start nibbling at $40 today? Uh, if you like the story still, yeah. But the only problem, it was a SPAC, and it seems like all SPACs eventually want to go back to 10 bucks. I own GNOG. I sold half of it. I've got a P still. It looks like it's going back to 10 bucks. It's 1060 this morning. I maybe buy some GNOG if I didn't own it at ten bucks. I actually think that's a good one at ten. There's a few that I'm interested in here, but it's really, really tough market right now for growth investors. Okay. I do think there's an opportunity for some bounces in some of these names. I'm not throwing in the towel on the ones I've got right now, and a few of these like GNOG ten dollars. I might actually add to it. Uh, I'll just give you guys one number on the downside, and this I'm I'm bummed because it's the bottom number on my sheet. And uh, that's last week's low, 41.20. Current low, 26.75. Keep an eye on that, folks. And uh, I'll right. get to, oh, Coinbase. I'll start with Coinbase here. So I'm going to hop off and I'll try and give you some levels on this, okay? Right. Catch you guys. Have a good day. Uh, catch you guys later. Yeah, so on uh, on oh, on that note, uh, you know, Dennis was talking about pen, talking about Golden Nugget, talking about gaming, talking about growth, maybe uh, – Nibbling a little bit here and there. I'm going to bring on uh, the CEO of a growth company right now, Bart Barden. He's the COO of eSports Technologies. You may know the ticker EBET, re recent IPO. Let's bring Bart on here. Bart, good morning. How are we doing today? Hey, good morning, Spencer. Good afternoon here in Dublin. But yeah, how are you? Good afternoon in Dublin. My mistake. Uh, so let's let's start with this. Uh, you guys are a very recent IPO. Um, ex explain to us the business because you're as i see it you're you're not quite esports and, and and you're not quite gaming you're you're sort of in the middle there is that is that a fair assessment that is a fair assessment okay. yeah um we are a uh esports focused wagering group um operating uh internationally primarily uh and you know as DraftKings, as as some of the guys there on before were saying, you know, our we're looking to acquire customers, and uh, you know, we're running a uh, sports book, right? But we are very, very focused on esports events in our sports book, and we're trying to deliver and build the product uh, for that esports wagering customer, right? It's a very different customer on what they expect, um, and it's a very different customer on what they've been able to actually. Uh, consume to date. It's a very underserved and and growing market. So you said internationally. Uh, I know you're in Japan. Uh, is that the only market you're in right now? Uh, primarily, we're focused on Southeast Asia right now, right? And we're expanding uh, outward from Southeast Asia into Latin America. We'd currently done business there uh, before under our brand Gagawi. Um, and then obviously, we're looking to move into other regulated markets uh, Western Europe and and obviously eyes on the United States as well. So that was my next question: is is uh, is why are you focused on Southeast Asia now? And I'm not quite sure what the regulation is for like esports gaming. Yeah, so our our uh, our jurisdiction right and our license allows us to take uh, wagers from about 140 countries. Um, you know, many in Southeast Asia, right? So we were focused on there before in our past and focused, you know, to grow and scale based on obviously now IPOing and, and having uh, the ability to, to scale the business. Um, that's the current focus. 
Um, and also just, you know, in general, from an esports viewership perspective, uh, about 75% of, of esports content, um, you know, matches, et cetera, are viewed and consumed, uh, you know, outside the United States, right? So the primarily, the primary places that esports is actually wagered on is in Europe and Southeast Asia. So explain the story for me here, because this this is like a growth industry on top of a growth industry, right? Uh, so I I explain what the opportunity is here, because it, it, yeah. where where it seemed like really 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 early days, and this is by no means uh, you know a, a, a sure thing. It's it's gonna it's gonna develop the way you you think it is. So ex explain explain that story. Sure. It, it is a very, very uh, high growth. And like you said, it's kind of a, a growth on top of a growth, right? So let me start with obviously, you know, wagering in general, right, is very, um, is, is, is a very popular market and a very high growth market, right? And the tailwinds there are because of the regula regulatory changes, right? You have more regulatory acceptance, right? For just online betting and sports betting in general, okay? Now you enter esports on top of that. Um, from a from a regulatory and jurisdictional perspective, most esports betting is considered sports betting, meaning it's just a different type of sport. Okay, that's how most all jurisdictions and countries recognize esports to date, right? So if you take that and say, okay, now you have this esports audience, but you have 550 million between you know growing to 600 million people who consider themselves esports fans or watch esports broadcasts habitually. OK, but you only have a very, very small fraction of those that are even betting on the product uh, or, or, or betting on the esports matches. So that is where your growth comes from. Right. So even if you unlock two percent of that five hundred and fifty million. Right. And growing uh, viewer base, um, you have a very large audience that you can unlock into um, a, a wagering product. And therefore, that's your growth on top of the growth. Who who is that that audience? Because you, you said the audience is different. I, I guess they're different in the fact that what they're younger, I presume. But maybe like, in what other ways are they different from what we think of as the conventional sports yeah. audience? Yeah. Um. So the first thing is is you know they've grown up. Um, you know, watching, you know, esports broadcasts. They're the type of people that, you know, know, know who Tifu is, right? But don't know who Tom Brady is, right? And so it's this audience that has grown up playing, watching, and being very excited about, you know, video game, competitive video game play, and everything that goes around it, okay? Um, additionally, they tend to be millennial, younger age, right? Coming, coming into it. Um, and and in reality, um, you know, they're competitive gamers. They understand that you know that that there's a way that you know um, you can extract value from potentially you know wagering or looking at at and engaging with competitive games. And therefore, uh, they they find uh, this to be a fun you know entertaining thing to do. Just like an NFL fan would you know potentially, I'm a Seahawks fan. You can see here, I got a Russell Wilson jersey right behind me. Um, you know. Uh, make a punt on the Seahawks. Uh, you could see a Fortnite person who's grown up loving watching Fortnite, um, wanting to make a, a a wager on on a Fortnite market. Yeah. Um, now, as as we said, this is like this is super super early days, right? Not just for this industry, but for your company as, as well. And the IP, you IPO'd what was it like three weeks ago? Now I, I think it was. Yeah, the, just about yeah three and a half yeah three weeks ago, right? Yeah. So like. How, how long term is this story here? Because it, it, it might be a while till you guys uh, reach profitability or, or even see see meaningful revenues. So, like, how, how long term are we talking for that? I, yeah, I, the the um, the acceptance of esports now, right? So, if you just look at you know eighteen months ago, if you look at the the amount that's uh, you know being wagered on esports worldwide, it is definitely growing and growing faster. Uh, but it is a longer term type of play to unlock and and be ubiquitous, right? To 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 really message to that esports betting customer and find out what they want. That is a little bit of a longer term play. However, um, because of COVID, powered by COVID, powered by the growth of of everyone now starting to participate 
and watch more video game product, um, it isn't as far off as you would as you would as you would think. And one of the reasons why you know we have IPO'd now and we've chosen public market versus let's say staying private is really um, you know there's a lot of small players in the world right now. There's not a real true dominant player that has put out a proper esports betting pro um, you know platform and product. And uh, some of the big guys are starting to look at it, but again, it's an expertise that isn't just you know a an NFL trader or or or, or a soccer trader. It is a definite um, you know it, it, the sports function differently, the matches function differently, the odds move differently. Everything about it is different. So what we're doing is we're really trying to build the technology to kind of bring esports betting you know in line with a, as a great product is out there in sports betting whether that's better prices right custom promotions things that we want to do to message specifically to this esports customer to accelerate exactly what you said which is you know get the growth going sooner rather than later and, and that brings up a point because I, I don't really know anybody in this space but like why wouldn't a, a, a pen or a DraftKings or a uh, FanDuel or whomever, you know, want to just jump in here. And, and what you're saying, your value add is over those guys is, first of all, you're not, you're doing it and they're not at the moment. But secondly, I, well, it's what it's it's the technology i'm trying to like yeah it's so it's 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 a couple things it's it's the technology um you know behind it it's the expertise and the modeling right so we've invested in 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 a significant amount of resource uh the biggest one of the biggest arguments from a customer in esports today is that um the the, the value isn't as good so if you're betting on esports you're not getting as good a price as if you're betting on um, you know, a, a, a premier league football match. Okay? okay. And, and that takes investment that takes modeling that takes, you know, data that takes all this. And we've invested in doing that, um, in order to improve that experience for that, for, for that customer. So we're in, you know, basically investing in esports specific tech, right. Yeah. That we hope that we can either, you know, partner with DraftKings, Penn, et cetera, at some point. Right. Um, they don't, we don't just don't have to see them as competitors, but really focus to, to acquire that e that esports specific customer, right. The customer that didn't grow up on NFL, but grew up watching, you know, Dota two or CSGO. Right. And that's, that's the customer we're going after. So eventually to finish my, to finish it, the, the customer set can be complementary. Right where they could have a very large traditional sports betting customer base, and then we could be a growing customer base, right? Um, that 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 could be complementary to them and their products. Uh, and then I, you know, I brought up your chart there. I, I mentioned the IPO, and I I had reached out to you guys because it had been some pretty wild trading action in the couple of days. It settled down. Now uh, I have no idea what that was about. The, the those, those first two days there, I, I doubt you you know either. Um, but just really, really weird, really weird action uh, that you don't typically see, uh, you know, two days uh, for the first two days into an IPO. So I thought that was really, really strange. I don't know if you have any comments on that, but it was, uh, like I said, you settled down now nicely, um, but those first two days were really, really weird. I don't know. E yeah, I mean, I can't comment on, you know, how it moved or, or whatever. I mean, again, we're looking at the longer term, right? So, you know, to your question of, you know, I'm looking to, to both, develop great product right and great platform that can improve that esports wagering experience for 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 that customer base and then look to really start it you know getting in and aggressively you know converting and making um and educating the 550 million you know people that watch esports um and and putting a really good product in front of them saying hey if you watch it right you might want to also bet on it uh, did, did you give a timeline on when you could enter the U S I don't, I don't think you did. Do you have one? So, uh, so we, we, we don't have a timeline right now, right? We're looking at the U S is obviously a very strategic market. Yeah. Again, very easy to focus outside the U S right now, uh, given both a regular regulation right outside the U S is much more known, right? In Europe and Asia and the activity and the act of betting on esports is also much more known and, and, and done. The, the, the key thing about the U.S. is um, you have the state by state kind of just general wagering kind of approval process, right, for, for, for online betting. And then behind it, 
you also have kind of a subset, which is then looking at how esports falls into that, right? And so what we're doing is we're kind of taking a wait and see approach, right? Uh, you know, starting to talk now strategically, we have a, a free to play product, right? That we're trying to put into the US market, leverage our investments that we're making on the platform side, right? Into a really cool and engaging free to play product and try to get customers engaged. So when we're ready, right? And licensing kind of makes sense and scalability supports ourselves. Um, then we can kind of go in with also a, a user base behind us uh, versus kind of completely fresh and cold. Bart Barton is the COO, Managing Director at Esports Technologies. Tickers up on the screen, E-B-E-T. Bart, thank you so much for joining us all the way from across the pond. Appreciate it. And we'll uh, we'll be watching you. With, I will be watching with great interest as an esports fan and uh, follower. And uh, be watching the company and uh, see how it goes. Good luck. Great. Hey, thanks, Professor. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, it is 9.15. I have not made many calls to action today. That's my mistake. Please go ahead, if you haven't already, give us a like. Drop us a like. Shoot us a like. Whatever method you want to do to convey the like. You want to drop it? You want to shoot it? You want to fling it? Whatever. Give it to us. We've got how many likes we got right now? 381. Oh, my God. It is not going to cut it. That is not going to cut it, guys. I'm going to need more than that. I need a lot more than that. Okay? A lot more than that. We had 2,000 people watching a couple minutes ago. Going to have to get me more than that. Um, all right. So something I'm noticing this morning, this does not um, does not give me a ton of confidence, is you look at some of the stocks that were up after hours off good earnings, and they're giving it all back, right? For example, i show you... Uh, Card up. Let me show you Triple D, right? Dennis's favorite, or not really? Dennis's stock, Triple D. Earn earnings last night, great number, right? Stock up after hours, mm, not anymore. What about Callaway? Huge beat that I should have seen coming because I spent half of Saturday driving around trying to find a left-handed driver. There's no supply anywhere. Huge beat, up after hours, not anymore. Um, this is not what you want to see. Not what you want to see at all, right? So it doesn't inspire a ton of confidence going into today. We're at the lows of the session in pretty much every major index. Yeah, I, I've got the SPY, the Qs, the Russell, and the, the Diamonds up on my screen, and uh, they're all at the low of the session. So, um, yeah, CPI is tomorrow. They're saying 3.5% inflation. The Fed's going to be like, oh, it's all good. It's all good. It's, tem it's temporary. It's transitory. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, let's go into the movers tool, see – do we have anything worth mentioning here this morning? Let's let's do a hard refresh of that. Like 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 future fuel, which is up. Late earnings, I think. They're giving some of it back, right? FF. What else is up here? Not a ton to speak of. A lot of leverage or inverse ETFs, which is uh, typically a sign that the market's in the red. When you get the inverse, inverse ETFs all on top of your leaderboard, yeah, not seeing a lot on the green side today. Auspicious start to the day or to the week for sure. How's AMC doing? I did not work. How's AMC doing? Yeah, see, AMC up after hours, not anymore, right? Hmm. 466 likes Eden Garden says. Let's get to 500. Come on now. Let's go now. The chat, the like tool doesn't refresh anymore. I think YouTube stopped supporting that, but uh, let's get to 500 likes. Let's get to 500 likes. Okay, also, programming note, everyone. Thursday and Friday are not going to be normal days here at Benzinga. We've got our next small cap event. It's a two-day event. So what we're going to do on both those days is we're going to have pre-market prep from 8 to 9, and then small cap all day until like 6 p.m., and then we'll do our evening stuff that we have uh, at say, uh, afterwards, like Money Mitch and things like that, but nothing from 9 to 6. It's all going to be small caps. And if you want to learn more, you can go to bzsmallcap.com or just watch this fancy 
commercial. Again, bzsmallcap.com. Here's today's schedule, guys. Programming schedule for the day. David Green will be live trading in, I guess, a couple of minutes. Here. Well, I mean, at the open. Uh, but his stream is going to start up at around 9.25 here. Uh, SPACs Attack at 11 o'clock. Their guest today is John Wilk. He's the CEO of Compo Secure, ticker DBDR. They're talking crypto. They're talking fintech. Uh, cold storage is basically like a um, uh, a payments solution for crypto. So DBDR, the CEO, will be on SPAC's Tech at 11.15 today. We got the power hour at noon. Get technical at 1. Um, normally, we would have oh yeah, crypto. Sorry, crypto show at, at 2. And normally, we'd have biotech buzz at 2.30, but VV is out today. So no biotech buzz today, unfortunately. Uh, we got the after close show. I'll be talking with Edwin Dorsey from the Barricade, talking shorts at four o'clock. We got Cannabis Insider at four thirty. We've got Trend Spider. If you haven't tuned into Trend Spider with Jake Wojastic, highly recommend it. He's got a very unique charting tool, uh, technical indicator that I think is great. It's like View Op, but kind of better. That'll be at five o'clock. Money Mitch at six. And wrapping up today is Trading Nomadic going through his setups and charts at 7 o'clock today. There is a schedule. All that available. YouTube.com slash Benzinga on Benzinga's Twitter, on Benzinga's Twitch as well. All right. How are we at on, on the likes for the day? Are we at 500? Because I can't leave until we're at 500. We are. Okay. I can leave now. So here's what's going to happen. This video is going to end. It will redirect straight to David Green's stream. Let's confirm whether or not he has started. I don't think he has started yet. He's going to start at 9.25. That's okay, though. Uh, yeah, Vegas, I said better than View Up. It's called Raindrops, and they're pretty freaking good, I think. He's been on our show a bunch of times. Um, so I do concur. Okay, good morning, Jason Raznick. What else do we have here? We got some tickers flying in the chat. More thoughts on Facebook. Novador is asking. I mean, we talked about Facebook. It's, I mean, earnings was a topping event for all that stuff. I, I'm, I know there are more tickers. We didn't get to all of them. I apologize. We will get to more tickers throughout the day. If you want to ask on Get Tactical, Neil will give you uh, give his thoughts on that. Uh, if you want to hold it for uh, the At The Close show, if it's a SPAC, save it for SPAC's attack. Um, but we try our best to answer every question that we get throughout the day. I know we don't always uh, get it, but uh, we try. We do try really hard um, to answer as many questions as we can. If you have any feedback for us, any uh, questions, comments, concerns, check out shows or email shows at Benzinga.com. That goes to a bunch of us here, and we, we take feedback seriously. For real, we, we don't ignore emails. Send us a, a note if you have a suggestion for something we should do or we should stop doing. Shows at Benzinga.com. Last thing I want to say, and then I'm going to be done for the morning, is Benzinga Pro is Benzinga's real-time news platform that I use all day. Mitch uses it. Dennis uses it. We all use it. Okay, we all use it. You can get a free two-week trial by going to pro.benzinga.com. Or if you want a discount, Enter the code YouTube20. That's YouTube, the word YouTube, lowercase, numbers 20. It's on the screen right there. YouTube20 to get 20% off 
any Benzinga Pro subscription. That's pro.benzinga.com. All right. I'm wrapping it up. David Green is about to start. Everyone have a good start to your day. Good luck at the open. Good luck in your trading. I will see you later on in the day.